following is a dead bug documentary. If you're watching it anywhere else than my channel, then some thieving fuck stole it. Greetings, Legion. This is Deadbug. The sentient being is a complex creature with a labyrinth of emotional pitfalls, fetishes, and hang-ups. Paraphilias, if you like, that even the most studied expert can be puzzled by. And when we reach the powers of attraction, it becomes a Pandora's box to decipher. And yet, there is a logic, a science to the unscience. I think it would do you a lot of good to meet someone you can't push around. You mean someone who pushes me around? Experts have long studied the conundrum of morality versus attraction. Should one automatically secede the other? And in the end, it is not the question, but the answer that holds sway. Every little experience, even the unpleasant ones, helps me know a little more about myself. you can say about Paul Bernardo and Carla Homoka that hasn't already been said and no matter how deplorable you may find their crimes it's hard not to deny that they don't have a certain je ne sais quoi which I think is French for they're fuckable and if you were an FBI profiler you'd be hard pressed to find any girl who drug her underage sister tongue fuck her while her boyfriend ass fucked her and the parents are in the other room watching television you gotta admit it takes a certain level of panache. <laughs> I don't even like to share a towel with my sister. Throw in the fact that she would die in while I did it. Shazam, you got yourself a winner. And considering she looks a far sight better in a bikini than Rose West. And you got a subject that you can talk about with the boys when you're out for a few beers. Known as the Ken and Bobby Killers. Cause Pa had those preppy boy next door looks and apparently he was well hung enough to exploit him. He had no problem getting pussy, but it weren't enough. They took to the streets, raping and drugging young girls, with Paul using Carla as the bait. Then they'd take him back to their place, turn on the camcorder, and then share them like they just order a fucking Chinese dinner. And then after fucking them every way you can fuck, they'd kill the girls, cut them up, and discard the bodies. Easy peasy, Japanesey. But I guess for the killer couple, sadly all good things come to an end. Because as one egghead philosopher once said, when the pursuit of pleasure takes over rational thinking, <laughs> well most certainly your days are numbered. More than one person would say that Scott Peterson were riding a gravy train with biscuit wheels. Tall, dark, handsome, a pretty and devoted wife at home about to give birth to their first child. But I guess looks can be just as deceptive as the story you tell your wife when she asks what smells like fish. And speaking of fish, people found it even more fishy when Scott Peterson's wife went missing on Christmas Eve while he were out dropping his line in the water. When in fact, he weren't dropping his line in the water. He was dropping his load in his mistress. And while he was getting all stinky finger, people searched here, they searched there, they searched everywhere, but no Lacey Peterson. It was about a month later, when an almost full-term fetus turned up on the shore near the marina, that I guess the writing were on the wall. Because a week later, Lacey Peterson's body turned up. Well, at least some of it, because I had one missing, one of the legs, one of the feet. Well, you get the idea. I mean, murder is a nasty business. Alert, two bodies found in Richmond, California. Lacey and her unborn child did not deserve to die. Or at this point, the cops started ripping apart sexy Scott's alibi like a retard eating Kentucky Fried Chicken. 
uh, at the time. When this all Investigators happened. confirm they have a receipt from the marina where Scott said he went fishing man on December 24th. Who was educated, Even who so, had... they've hauled in his computer and his car and have not ruled him out as a suspect. And when his mistress heard that he were a person of interest, she went straight to the cops and told them the whole story. Even the personal stuff. Like how he'd only fuck her up the ass because he hated kids. And when Scott spoke to her on the phone and she were acting strangely, he must have sensed something. So he grew a beard, colored his hair, and headed to the border. But I guess there ain't too many handsome Mexicans, because he stood out like a retard at a spelling bee. And the cops busted his baby killing ass. Scott Peterson was arrested for the murder of his wife. We the jury for the final degree of the murder to be that of the first degree. Hell have no fury like a woman. Are you in any way connected to Lacey's disappearance? I had nothing to do with Lacey's disappearance. Liar, liar, pants on fire. Such is the case of 28-year-old Jody Aries, who as men, I'm sure we can all agree, she's pretty tasty. Well, unless you're a gay. And 30-year-old life insurance salesman and motivational speaker Travis Alexander must have agreed because after meeting her at a work conference, they fucked that very first night and took bitches to prove it. Premarital sex is a sin. Nice. That's fucking nice. I love photography. Ooh, yeah. Huh, what the fuck? Travis, you're a boner killer. But perhaps Travis, a devote Mormon, had options because he broke up the relationship only five months later, causing Jody great distress, and by some accounts, anger. In fact, the insurance peddler had confided in friends about his worries and that she were a bit of a bunny burner, and perhaps he decided to test that theory when he took Jody's name off of a ticket for a planned romantic weekend in Cancun, Mexico, and substituted it with another young lady's name. Well, I guess Jody were a bit upset because she decided to drive from her home in California to Travis's home in Arizona to discuss the matter. Using a key from under his mat, she took a picture, then stabbed him 30 times and shot him in the back of the head, and then took some pictures of it like he used to take pictures of her. Then for a motive, she told the cops that she had to do it because Travis abused her and that she feared for her life. She became a media darling with fans all over the world, over 36,000 Twitter followers, and poor Travis Alexander. It looks like the player got played, but turned that frown upside down. Because in the end, the jury weren't too impressed by Jody's hotness, and they gave her murder one. You're the one that did this, right? Yes. Yeah, I know what you're thinking, but we've given the guys something. We've given the girls something. Now we gotta give the gays something, because God forbid anyone would troll me and say I'm a homophobe. Six foot tall, boyish good looks. Apparently Jeffrey Dahmer were a sissy's wet dream. My grandmother's words, not mine. And I guess those boyish good looks translated into cash. Because although he only received 24 cents a day working in the prison gym, according to prison records, he annually received thousands of dollars from adoring fans, men and women. That's fucked up. A rich heiress in France sent him $5,000 along with a marriage proposal. A nun in Australia, $5,000 so he could buy a Bible and religious cassettes. Huh, that'll come in handy. Another man died and left Dama his house and his will. And the list goes on and on. Apparently, when prison staff were cleaning out his cell after he got his brains bashed out, Dama had over $5,000 in his possession. And this didn't count what he already had back in the prison safe. I guess it'd be a fair question for the victim's relatives to ask. Don't anybody realize that this guy's a corpse ass fucking serial killer? I mean, I'm just saying. It's all you terrible crimes that the mind can conceive. And what we are waiting for now are the actual charges, the information, the criminal complaints that will be presented from the Milwaukee Police, Police Department. And the in a 2012 psychological report that had studied numerous women who had embarked on relationships with serial killers or married them, there were several reasons for the relationships. Some believe it was the ultimate challenge to change the cruel and powerful man. 
Others believed in the little boy that the killer once were and to seek to nurture him. And inevitably, there were women and some men who embarked on the relationship for the media spotlight or to get a book deal or movie. Some mental health experts have compared the infatuation with the serial killer as an extreme form of fantasism where females and some men can't find love in normal ways and as what's clinically called love avoidance, seek relationships with what cannot be consummated. But I guess with Dharma now on a slab, he'd be the ultimate catch. Show me a stripper who says she's doing it only to pay for her university. And I'll show you a blind man who sits down to take a piss. And yeah, sure, given a chance to fuck one, we would. But they certainly ain't white material. Well, unless you like your wife getting naked in front of other men. Meet Ken Lippenpink. When he put his face between Michelle Lineham's legs, he must have thought he was tasting God's vagina. Cause he proposed a month later and started throwing his money at her like a retard playing catch with a batting machine. But anybody who thinks they're gonna play happy ever after with a stripper, come on over to my house, I got a cure for cancer. Because Michelle Linen had been taking advantage of men since she still tasted like piss. Cause she wasn't just engaged to one suitor, there were two other men in her life buying her gifts, trying to keep her happy. A fool in his money, some may say. Big head, little head, others may lament. And when the men eventually found out, she worked on a compromise, and two of them moved in with her. Nice. That's fucking nice. I love barbecues. And I guess she just kept riding the gravy train. But threesomes rarely work. There's always an odd man out. But it was when Mr. Love Gun turned up dead with three bullets in his head. Well... The cops didn't have to look too far to find out who did it. Three take away one equals two. And when Alaskan cops started poking around, they found out that Lep Pink had signed over a million dollar life insurance policy to the stripper only two days before he played head tag with a bullet. And she didn't wait too long to cash in her chips, putting in the policy claim the same week before his body had a chance to go cold. And when cops found a letter in his safe saying that if anything happened to him, it was a stripper or her other boyfriend, it was then the cops arrested the stripper and her other roommate for murder. Big tits, a little girl voice. During the trial, she became a media sensation. I believe so, yes. Did you make this decision today or have you? I've had the last year to think about it. Do you feel you've given it enough thought? Yes, sir. But I guess her thousands of fans weren't enough the jury took her down for murder. And she got 99 years. But it were after meeting a rich benefactor who had become a pen pal that she got an appeal in 2015. It was during that appeal that her tubby former lover and co-accused died of unexplained circumstances and the judge had to throw the case out and she was set free. <laughs> When cops dragged in former Texas altar boy Richard Ramirez on 13 counts of murder and 11 counts of sexual assault, it said female hearts are fluttering. Only as Paige calls herself a Satanist. She says Ramirez has written letters to her and that she's talked with him in jail. Everyone makes him look so bad, you know, but I know that he's, he's a nice person because I've met him and I know. He's convicted of 13 murders. I know. <laughs> Six foot one with dark brooding looks coming across like a Hispanic Jim Morrison at the height of his trial Ramirez were receiving a hundred letters from women a week Since his arrival at the San Francisco jail women from around the country including one of the female jurors who had found him guilty in Los Angeles had been flocking to the San Francisco facility even fighting with each other over Richard's affections. And when he decided to take himself out of the Dayton game, he scored big time. I mean, I'm obviously, you know, being sarcastic, you know, because she's kind of a dog. Do you have emotions, Richard? No comment. 
Okay, okay, relax. I was fucking joking. It's not like you guys are paying me or anything. Now last on the list of top fuckable killers, based on the amount of fan mail they received, is Theodore Bundy. Yeah, I know it's predictable. But the numbers do not lie. Even right up till the day he were executed, he were receiving more fan mail than Ramirez in his heyday. And it's interesting to note that Hollywood had just made a movie about him and cast pretty boy Zac Afrin to play him in the film. Continuing to provocate that bad boy sex symbol image. And considering when they made a film about Richard Ramirez, they hired Luke Diamond Phillips. I mean, come on, he were good in La Bamba, but he ain't no fucking sex symbol. And Bundy, with all his adoring fans, were even able to get married and have a baby in prison. Something he robbed his young victims of. Victims that he admitted saving their skulls as trophies, and even going back to the scene of the crime and fucking their decomposing remains. I'm no social scientist, and I haven't done a survey. I mean, I, I don't pretend that I know what John Q. Citizen thinks about this. <clears throat> but I've lived in prison for a long time now. And... I've met a lot of men who were motivated to commit violence just like me. And without exception, every one of them was deeply involved in pornography without question. I know what you're thinking, but do you know what I'm thinking? <laughs>